gonna walk off as you came out. Folks, if you gather nice and close, you can hear the rabbi a little bit better. It's the last Yep. If anyone needs chairs, they're here for you. Get people off. You send them. There's a couple things that Chuck sent to me. Do you want to read them? Do you want me to read them? Um, no, he, they, they have directions that they sent to me. So they were okay. Zach um, to read this, and there's extra copies in me. Where did Zach? Zachary. No. Zachary, can you have something? אשת חיו מי ימצא, ורחוב ימיני מאחד, פתח כבר לב עליו, שלל לא יחזר. כלומר, טוב ולא רע, כל ימי חייה, עוון וחרדת, לא בושה, תשכן ליום אחרון. A woman of valor, who can find. She is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband trusts in her, and so he lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm, all the days of her life. She perceives that her labor is rewarding. Her candle burns on into the night. She reaches out to those in need, extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity. She faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is on her lips. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel them all. That is taken from Proverbs chapter 31. Adonai Adam. Vateda eu Benenot Vathash Veu Adam lo hevel Yamav Ketzel over Baboke Yatsit Vechala La Erev Yamola Hel Viavesh Tashevano Shada Kavitome Shuvu, 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 bene Adam. God, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning shoots up renewed, and in the evening fades and withers. Turn us to turn to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures. Well, would that we were wise, that we understood where we were going. For when we die, we carry nothing material away. If our glorious ideas of ourselves do not accompany us. But mark the wholehearted, behold the upright, for they shall have. That has taken a beloved Sheila from us. And in this case, I really emphasize the word beloved. We grieve in a darkened world. In our silence, there's lamentation, in tears, there's loneliness. But lost in our sorrow, we find family and friends standing among us. We ask that God hears us and is with us. 
For Sheila's love that unite us in life is something which death cannot sever. So for her companionship, which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness, which is now precious remembrance. For these and more, even in a time of grief, we give thanks. And it's in a time like this that we turn to the words from our sacred scriptures. As I know how I may I never leave. As we may aim on an eye, a session man by eyes. I tell the motor of Lecha, I am um shum Racha, he nay loy and um loy, he son to Mary Israel. A nice Maracha and nice silk. Ad ya yad imineka, the mam has shemesh loy, Yakakar, Yareach Balaya. A nice. I will lift mine eyes to the mountains, what is the source of my help? My help comes from Adonai, maker of earth, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way, your protector neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your garden and your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night, but God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul, your going, your coming, now and forever. Let us say, Amen. 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 That is from Psalm 21. For everything there is a season time for every experience under heaven. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to discard, a time to tear, and a time to see, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. This is a time to remember, and I know that many of you here have remembrances and prayers that you wish to offer at this time. So I simply ask, who's going to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I'm the oldest son representing. Um, throughout the years, I didn't always do everything that my mom wanted me to do. And this is one of the things that my mom didn't want me to do. Because last time I was home and she was in the hospital, she said, Leslie, I don't want you coming home for my funeral, and I don't want you, I don't want Michelle to come, and I don't want Alana to come. So, Ma, <laughs> one more time, one more time, I didn't listen to you, and uh, I'm glad, I'm glad we didn't. Um, it's funny, Michelle and I took a little ride this morning. We went to Highland Park. First time Michelle met my mom and dad was at my mom's 60th birthday, and. Uh, and uh, we went to Highland Park for the first time when we were here. So we kind of went through that remembrance. And then we took a drive to Irondequoit, went to my old house, took a drive around the neighborhood, went to Seneca Park Zoo. And um, there, there's too many memories for me to even recount. I can tell you that um, my mom was really a very good person. Um, unfortunately, she didn't have all the opportunities that she could have because of the time that she grew up. Uh, but she made the best out of her life. She was a good mom to all of us. We may not agree with my mom and dad all the time, but she certainly loved us all. And for that, I will always remember. Um, and I'm glad she's with my dad now. She certainly suffered long and hard. And uh, I'm glad that she's at peace. So that's really all I 
to say. I guess I'll start with some remembrances I have of my mom. You know, back on Sunflower Drive. You know, with Nate and our families together. Um, I know a lot of time I went over to Nate's house because over there you could shoot BB guns and play with power tools. You couldn't do that at our house. Um, I have remembrances of when I was at Hobart and Cornell, my parents coming, taking me out for dinner. And those were, those were always good times for me. I have remembrances of when I was in business, my mom working with me for over 20 years. Um, they weren't always, you know, you know, the most agreeable of times together. There was a lot of contention, but my mother was able to, during, you know, the lean times in the winter, figure out how to get every bill paid and, and keep an eye on, you know, every dime so, you know, her son could thrive. Mm -hmm. And some of my most recent poignant memories are when my mom had her health problems beginning last July and August, her great thrust and the reason she went through all of this was to try to make it to my son Zachary's wedding. Mm -hmm. And she had a ritual with me every morning where she would text me the number of days she had to survive to get to Zachary's wedding. And she started at 287 days. Every morning she would text me 287, 286, and that ended last week when she texted me number 43. And then a few days later, I didn't hear from her, I didn't get a text from her, didn't get a text from her. And then a few days later, which was last, just this past Sunday, she texted me, she didn't text the number, she texted me, I did my best. Oh, mm -hmm. And mom, you did your best. So, it's just really poignant to me. Well, that's hard. But, no. Some words from my uncle. I want to thank you all for being present at the farewell celebration of Sheila's life. I wish that Abigail, Rose, Trevor, and I could be with you there today. Above all else, Sheila Burgash was, was also a loving mother to me who always supported me regardless of the path I had taken or where the path had took me. I remember mom telling me two stories about her youth that made me aware of the bit of the wild child she could be. The first, was the time she decided to skip school one day, <laughs> which in itself was a monumental decision given the fact that if Grandpa Saul found out well enough, sad about that. I found herself with her friends down at the Genesee River, right near Lake Ontario. I can't remember how she told me it happened, but she fell into the river and came out of the water covered in leeches. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, she freaked out. That incident stuck with her for the rest of her life, as she always carried a dread of leeches after that day. The second story involved her graduation night from the old Irondequoit High School. At the time, the new Irondequoit High School had just been completed, and the old high school would no longer be in use. <clears throat> So in order to be, to be properly be remembered as the last greatest graduating class of the old high school, my sweet and innocent mother decided to be, su be a supportive member of the party of Anarchists who burned down the old high school. She was never, <laughs> she was never implicated in that daring deed. But I know from the way she told me that story that she carried a healthy awareness for that could have been had, she had been found out. The last year of my mom's life was physically difficult, but her declining health did not diminish her fierce desire to main, maintain her independence. Now I know where I got that same powerful desire to be an independent person, especially now as I am learning to walk again. Mama Sheila is with me every day 
inwardly encouraged me, encouraging me to continue on the demanding path of rehabilitation and independence. Thank you, Mom. I love you, and I will continue every day to maintain a positive mental attitude and work through the pain so I can, can tell you one day soon in my heart that Chucky Bosch is walking again and enjoying good health. Uh, this is prayer for a peaceful death. Please take the soul and spirit of our dear Sheila into the sweetest corner of your mind, the most tender place in your heart, that she and all of us will be comforted. For now she is gone, and we pray, dear God, for the strength to remember that she has not gone far, for she will be with you and shall remain so forever. She will remain with us, for we are all in you together. The cord that binds us one to another cannot be cut, surely not by death. For you, dear God, have brought us together and we remain in eternal connection. There is no power greater than you. Death is not your master nor ours. These things we believe and ask in our hearts to register. We surrender to you our grief. We surrender to you our pain. Please take care of our dear Sheila as she passes into your light and love. Please let her know that she will remain in all, of, in all hearts of all her family forever. Although they will always miss her, they will take care of one another as she always took care of them. Please, dear God, let her go into the comfort of your love, knowing that her dear beloved family will be taken care of and that the love that they share will not end with her passing, but will live on in all of their hearts forever. And please, dear Lord, take care of us. Amen. Amen. So, I know that Alana is um, with us here in spirit, and is sorry that she can't be here in, in body, but she had a very close relationship with her bubby, and they were always able to talk about anything and everything, and uh, she looked forward to those phone calls, and I know that and Alana has a heavy heart today, as we all do. And Sheila was just a brave, intelligent, confident woman. And I just think of what she faced throughout her life and how she always did it to, to her best ability and put on a brave face and continued to march forward. And I think she was a wonderful example to everyone who knew her and loved her. And uh, I, I think about her remembrance, one of the first times she came to the house to visit and she noticed that my the light switches in the house were not all facing the same direction. And she wanted to know, how can you live like this? And I, was I like, can't live like that either. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. How can you notice it? But uh, <laughs> she always, you know, it took me a little bit of time, but then I realized that these things were always said well-meaningly and with love. And we really wound up having a, a close and, and important relationship. And I'm going to read on behalf of Abigail and Charles a poem that they've written for Sheila called A Poem for Sheila Sharf Burgash. Care, giving kindness was something you had, always there for your friends, family, mother, and dad. Your pride as a loving mother and wife was the shining, beautiful star in your life. You loved your sons with all your heart, whether they were together or apart. We'll see you in the stars and sky. We'll see you in your children's and your grandchildren's eyes. I'm sorry. And when our days have ended, how happy we will be with arms outstretched, you'll greet to share us in eternity. I just like to share a little bit about my aunt. I'm an only child, and uh, she really was my big sister. We're 13 years apart, and these guys were like my little brothers. And we gave you hell. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you're proud of it. <laughs> but at any rate, um, 
she was always uh, quick to give advice. <laughs> My mother always used to say, but you can't give Aunt Sheila advice. <laughs> <laughs> when she was always the caregiver, always the caregiver. Um, amazing with my grandparents. And then of course with Uncle Len. And a comic aside with uh, Stephen's tomato plants. <laughs> <laughs> they never did blossom. <laughs> well, it yes, depends they what you did. Did. <laughs> <laughs> They never bore fruit. <laughs> That's on how you look at it. <laughs> I got, I got one thing to say, close it up. I was the, I was the fourth wheel in the three-wheeled car, <laughs> uh, extra sun, but uh, I remember going over Sheila's and walking on eggshells because of uh, housekeeping and glass <laughs> and, and everything else. But she took on my wife and my daughters as her own and loved them, Absolutely. and we loved her, and uh, rest in peace. And we all miss her terribly. say something on behalf of the great uh, nieces and nephews just what a huge impact she had on my life and our lives uh, growing up and up until now and just what a, an amazing person she was and the word sugarcoating was not in her vocabulary <laughs> <laughs> she would let you know what she was thinking and I, I just respect the hell out of that um, just an amazing person and uh, we're gonna miss her terribly and now it's my turn <laughs> And thank you all for sharing. A few minutes ago, you mentioned this was another time you were not listening to your mother. Well, if we had been listening to Sheila, the service would have ended 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> she did not want the service to go even this long. Yeah. <laughs> but she deserved more than that. Yeah. There's a difference between listening to your mother and honoring your mother. And everybody here mm -hmm. is honoring Sheila and her memory in the memory of those who went before her. So you're all to be commended for disobeying her. <laughs> I just read a few minutes ago the words from Proverbs that described her to a T. She is clothed in, stre in strength and dignity and she faces the future cheerfully. After Len died, following Rosh Hashanah service. You told me I wasn't going to tell this story, but I am. <laughs> I sat down with her at the bagel brunch, told her if she ever needed a ride to services, I'd be glad to take her. She said, oh, that's great. I can be your cougar. And Stephen said, <laughs> and Stephen said well, I got news for you, Rabbi. She said that to a lot of guys. <laughs> but there's a reason I'm telling this story. Sheila faced the future cheerfully when she was in the hospital, the multiple visits I made, seeing the arms that were just completely red uh, from the internal bleeding, she couldn't wait to get home. And for 200, and she started counting down 287 days until her grandson's wedding. And she didn't quite make it. Well, there's a wonderful story by a writer named Edmund Fleck called The Prophet's Kiss. And it describes the last days of Moses. When God tells Moses, you have 24 hours to live. Moses does not want to die. He wants to get into the promised land. He doesn't want to die before he completes his mission. So he writes down the entire Torah to give it to Joshua, to give it to the elders, to give to the children of Israel. It takes them all night. When he finally gets done, God tells him, you have one hour left to live. He recites the whole Torah to Israel in one hour. But then God summons him to the top of Mount Nebo. And Moses goes up. God shows him the promised land. And then he asks his angels, well, who's going to go down and take Moses' soul? Well, the angel Michael went down, couldn't do it. The angel of death, Samaya, went down. Moses out wrestled. 
So finally God showed him the promised land one more time. Not just geographically, but also Israel's future. The building of the temple in David's time. The destruction of the temple in the Babylonia, by the Babylonians. The rebuilding of the temple uh, under Ezra and Nehemiah destruction by the Romans, the scattering of the Jewish people, and all the tragedies that befell them. And no Messiah, no Messiah, no Mashiach to redeem them. And then it dawned on Moses. History cannot be completed. The Mashiach cannot come until I too die. And so if you read the last line of the Torah, it says, there has not yet arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses who knew God face to face. On top of Mount Sinai, Moses was told, no man can see me and live. But it says Moses saw God face to face. The rabbis inferred it. Edmund Flegg draws through the story that Moses saw God face to face on Mount Nebo. And God, with a kiss, drew out Moses' last breath. And then Moses rose to heaven and at an alabaster table was there with all the, the patriarchs and progenitors of the Jewish people waiting right next to God for the hour of Mashiach. Centuries later, Rabbi Hillel would postulate all Israel has a place in the world to come. Sheila has made that world to come today just a little bit brighter just a little bit more loving. She's reunited with Len. She's reunited with her brother and sister. She is, in the truest sense, gathered to her ancestors and gathered to her people. And now she is there with God and can be his cougar. <laughs> can you hear that? Can you hear that? <laughs> I am Nachman Bialik wrote, After my death, mourn me with us. There was a person, and now she is no more. Before her life was ended, the song of life was broken. Oh, there was one more melody. And now that melody is lost forever. Lost forever. But Stephen has a prayer to read that tells us she is not lost. When my mom would come to visit my dad here, she would read two things. And one is a little newspaper clipping with a sort of like a little poem, and the other is the uh, prayer for remembrance. And on the prayer for remembrance, it says on here, you know, it says, we remember them. And my mom crossed out on every line, we, and wrote I because she wanted to remember him. And after them, she crossed out him. And this is what my mom carried in her wallet to uh, say whenever she came to visit my dad. But I'm gonna take out the I and put back the we, and take out the, that, the him and put back the them. Because now it is we and now it is them. First I'll read her little clipping. And it says, those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near. Still loved, still missed, and very dear. And she always read this first, and then she read her prayer. We remember them in the rising of the sun and in its going down. We remember them in the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter. We remember them in the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of the autumn. We remember them when we are lost and sick at heart. We remember them when we have joys we yearn to share. We remember them so long as we live, they too shall live. For they are now a part of us. We remember them. <laughs> In Kidoshim Utanaim Kizahara Kemaskinim, at Nishmat Shiva, but Sorachaya, 
شو هلا خلق ولا ما هلا خميم يستريها بس انت كان اطباق ولا ما بيت شو بيت شو هخيم اتنش ما تاب فلما يهون ما خلق تاب تهنو اخبار شو الله ما ماش كبا من امار امين Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Sheila Sharf Burgash, who has entered eternity. O oh God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence in the shadow of your wings, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace. May we say, Amen. Amen. Tagi boli olamad en arad lechoshia. Lechakia chaim bechesed mechayi hakol brachamim rabim. So mech bafun bafech olim umekera sarim umekayim emunat ali shenei afar. Michamach abal gburot umidu melach. Melach mei nitu mechayim atzviach bishua. Arachat aranai arotech lechokeno. Kayola. We praise you, O God, the true Judge. Eternal is your might. All life is your gift. Great is your power to save. With love you sustain the living. With great compassion you give life to all. You send help to the falling. You bring healing to the sick. You bring freedom to the captive. And you keep faith with those who sleep in the dust. So we praise you, God, who implants within us everlasting life. We are now about to tuck Sheila in to her earthly resting place and free her neshama to enter the Olam Papa'a, the world to come. And um, when the service concludes, the mitzvah will be upon us to actually tuck her in with the earth over here with the food provided. I just remind everybody each. Each person's first shovel is done with the spade upside down. This shows our reluctance to say goodbye. At the same time, we do this mitzvah because it's one of the highest mitzvahs we can do in Judaism to show honor to the deceased because they cannot thank us. So therefore, we know it's done with no expectation of thank, but out of reverence to honor our loved ones. So, everyone, starting with uh, Les and Stephen, will be invited to participate in that mitzvah. At the <laughs> also, Sheila has established a memorial to the congregation next time. Um, the address is to Mount Rise. It is another example of her generosity that goes before her. May Sheila come to her eternal home in peace. And may those who mourn her loss find comfort in the hope that though the dust returns to the earth as it was, the spirit returns to God who gave it. Death is not the end. Rather, a relationship with Sheila transforms itself into a relationship with memories of Sheila. We know that all of us must eventually tread this same path. So let's live as Sheila did, that the coming of this hour finds us unafraid. And may our deeds honor her memory. And let us say, Amen. In solemn testimony to that unbroken faith which links the generations one to another, I ask that. You all join me in Kaddish. You should have the cards. Yitadal v'yitadash shmei rabba. Diyamah dibrach yutei. Diyamah dibrach yutei. 
May God grant peace to all of us who are in mourning, comfort to all the bereaved among us, and let us say, Amen. Amen. Go your way, for God has called you. Go your way, and may God be with you. May your righteousness go before you, and the glory of God receive you. And would everybody here face Stephen and Les, and repeat after me, may God console you. May God console you. With all who mourn. With all who mourn. In Zion and Jerusalem. In Zion and Jerusalem. Amen. 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 Now go forth in peace to life. This concludes the liturgical portion of the service. It's now time to tuck her in. This is soil from my dad's grave oh. that I saved until I knew my mom would die and I wanted to pour it in so they could be together. And here's something that only my brother will really understand. <laughs> oh, the patching spoon. <laughs> Yeah. 